that's me and just brief introduction i've been working at like a uh, mulesoft as a developer advocate and i've been working in mulesoft like as a technology for around five years now i've written few blogs sessions and then recently co-authored a book mulesoft for salesforce developers mm -hmm. and yeah i love traveling photography i'm a big time foodie and i would love to connect with you guys over linkedin twitter yeah just love chatting with me so uh forward looking statement uh, i know i shouldn't be adding this but oops uh, oh <laughs> <laughs> definitely not after this break <laughs> so yeah i mean just make your purchasing decision based on the products which are available and not on the forward looking ones uh agenda it's like yeah it's <laughs> it's just like everything you need to know about mulesoft in order to get started uh, we are going to have Q&A at the end, but in between as well. If you guys have any questions, feel free to like, stop, stop me, and I would happy to take that. I mean, yeah. So anyone who is like uh, completely new to me, so like this is the first time they are like even worrying about it or like, okay, nice. And any experts in me also? I know Nitish is, okay. Yeah, even she's nice. So if I'm stuck, please help me out. Okay, I mean, this, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Change is the only concern. I know I hate to say this, but yeah, this is true. I mean, over the past, and this chart itself, oh my God, I've seen this so many times. And if you are if you are attending a Mules of training or anything for the first time, this is the first thing you're gonna see. And that totally makes, makes sense because it's, gonna, like, it's actually gonna explain you why do you need an integration tool? What is the need? What is the purpose? Before getting started with, Anything, any integration tool, you need to know what is the purpose. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's it's quite easy as well. So with time, the demand on IT has been increasing. So you must be like, what is demand? And why are, like, as a developer, why do I need to know about this? So the reason is, uh, the demand, the increase for demand, basically, there are different reasons, like uh, uh, changing technology, different, uh, the data in different systems, and different demands different new technologies coming in new uh, new demands from the partners as soon as i uh, i'm about to release a project there is some new requirement which is coming in and then there's going to take another decade for me to complete the project so whenever i'm trying to get into some like completion phase there's something new coming up and how am i supposed to deal with this as a developer i definitely need something which is going to be giving me like uh, i definitely need a new approach which will be like uh, which will take me faster to market the go to market strategy should be like uh, easier I would say so that's wherein we are going to bring in the integration tool and that is a need so we can actually deliver faster to market and that's the whole purpose of having an integration tool and Mulesoft leads the market I can say that proudly so um, going ahead yeah we all have like you, you guys must be familiar to the Salesforce 360 degree wheels but what what is happening and you can see the mules of the integration thing over there so we have different clouds different services different capabilities available but you all know like among all these things the data which we have currently is residing in silos we have data in different systems so it says that 900 application in the average enterprise it could be more it could be less but when you're managing this many number of applications you cannot definitely go for a traditional approach which is like point to point connection right you need something which is going to be like just going to take out the point to point hustle the hassle and everything and it's going to make it simple easy and that's again second reason why we need an integration tool okay so in this session i mean it's not going to be all just ppt we are going to like actually have a demo not demo i mean i just hope it works uh, i wish i would have got your t-shirt <laughs> so yeah but we'll be seeing like any points uh, platform which is like we have like different capabilities in mulesoft and there are like so many more coming in as well so we have any point platform which we're going to see first then we'll go to studio We'll see like what are the different capabilities. We'll just do a high, view, high level overview. And I guess next time it's gonna be Todd who's gonna to do something APAX and uh, data view. That's what he said, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, whatever I was like. We are gonna do about any point platform, any point studio, some about composer because that will be like a little bit familiar to you guys. It's in the same platform, I guess. And a little bit about RPA as well. So just a brief about everything. And meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, even if this is new, just don't get overwhelmed with it. I mean, it's pretty simple. And we'll also see like, what are the ways we can learn it? How, what are the free training resources available for you guys about Mules of Community? And even after this session, you can get in touch with me like over LinkedIn, Twitter, and we can take it forward. So uh, with that, yeah, 
the basics let's get the basics there that's so important like when you're saying about the i mean before even getting to mulesoft we need to know like what is api led connectivity because that is kind of like the essence or the heart of mulesoft like that's where the entire picture and the entire thing starts so api led connectivity is like a systematic approach where we are actually breaking down I, I would I call it as like divide and conquer thing I would say because we're actually breaking down the entire system or the system uh, architecture of the network into smaller tiny pieces the fundamentals that is like the APIs so API is more like an essence of MuleSoft or maybe the building block so I mean even if you will be in the training or something like that you'll just see them Lego blocks so how just like the way you used to build the Lego blocks right joining one into uh, one into other and then building a whole structure so that's exactly what we are doing with MuleSoft but the thing here we are using is the API. So in API-led connectivity, we are actually dividing the entire framework into different layers, okay? So the first layer will be the experience layer. You can see a mobile and the web API. So in the mobile API, we're actually connecting our mobile. I mean, so that's an example, basically. So you're connecting to your mobile systems or you can be having some a different API, which is, but the whole essence of this experience layer is to connect to the outside world. To GUI to like to accept the incoming data, so it's like the the top layer you can see, just getting all the data. Okay. Then we have the process layer, which is the second one, and it's going to be doing the processing task, like just that the name says. It's going to be doing all the complex transformation, logical transformation, data weave, whatever complex operations you guys have, uh, like all the code and stuff, which is going to be the difficult part, would be say. So that's going to be under process layer, and the third one is system layer, which is like the bottom layer it's actually connecting to the different end systems like sap sap or like whichever systems you want to connect with whichever end systems so while i mentioned before that we have different data systems and the data is residing in different enterprise system and back end systems and all these things it will be in system layer and it's all isolated i mean they are there could be different developers working on different layers and we don't even like at some times we don't even need all these three layers we could be only if it's a smaller integration system we could be only having system you could be only having experience process or any combination combination as per your requirement but this is how it is so just imagine this is like an order management system wherein we are having different capabilities like there is a shipment order customer so like i said like while i'm about to release my project there is some new requirement coming in there is some new tool which is coming in the enterprise like something gets changed or something like that so even if something gets changed, like suppose if I'm remo removing this thing all together or replacing with this thing doing something else, I can still manage it. This entire system won't be broke. This will only this part will be removed. This will still be functioning. And that's how I can still take it to the market. That's how I can still make sure that it's going to the market faster. It's like it's still in place. It's not getting completely broke. Okay. So now, yeah, behind the API led connectivity, you are trying to build a reusable, composable architecture, which is like, which won't be breaking that easily. And it will be giving you more flexibility, more reuse. And I just said that we're removing this. What in case if, suppose if in future, if we are adding something else, like Salesforce got Slack or something, we want to ma add a messaging system like Slack, or uh, send messages to Slack in case, or if you want some different devices, some different use cases or different inputs to stream. So we can still add them while we are having this existing system in place. All we need to do is just have some new APIs. We'll also see like how to create the APIs and how it's gonna be. So yeah, there are different developers, different lines of IT businesses working on different layer, or if it's a smaller project, you can do it all at once. Uh, it's just that it's gonna be covering different kinds of um, functionality the experience layer is the one which is top layer which is going to be giving more of a user interaction uh, with the outside world okay it's going to collect the data in the middle layer it's going to do all the transformation it's just going to like transform the data have some logical operations and perform in the system layer we are going to have all the credentials passwords and everything like whatever we need for the end systems so the top two layers are completely unaware of what systems we are having beneath they don't have any idea where the data is going to go or what are the backend systems. We can get them changed anytime or we can have them replaced. We can add new, we can delete, whatever you want. But the above ones won't be affected at all. So that's all about API-led connectivity. And that is like the most basic or the most fundamental concept before even getting started with MuleSoft. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
and yeah going ahead we have this yeah so when i had this apl at connectivity when we are just building everything together so it forms an application network so this is how your entire structure would look like if we had not this like this is more like a so mesh kind of architecture i would say or a grid like architecture which is like there are different components and the, the m thing which you see is the mule sort of binding together all the different bits and pieces together so that all the data in silos is now totally aligned it's in place and we are getting more value out of it so that's the whole purpose we call it as application network and yeah this is a bigger picture an abstract picture you can say which is comprised like the single unit will be comprising still of the api uh, led connectivity thing the system layer each of them like suppose if i'm having this connection like between salesforce and mule sub i'll be still having some system uh, api process api experience api between them as per my choices but in case in future if i planning to remove azure i'm replacing with aws or something like that i can still do it but the entire structure will still remain intact so that's how we are building a composable reusable network mesh kind of architecture okay with that uh, yeah coming to my favorite part what is mulesoft so you must have heard that it's an integration tool but it actually has a lot more to offer other than integration i mean it's a complete ipas solution i would say it has everything to offer from for an api life cycle perspective right from designing an api publishing your api developing an uh, application an integration application testing it deploying it on a different servers we also have cloud hub which is like hosted on the anypoint platform the native cloud and here yeah, you can manage your application you can provide security so basically everything that you can think of when it comes to an api life cycle management you can do it you can also get your devops into picture you can integrate with your ci cd pipelines you can build your test cases automate your test cases as well you don't have to build them from scratch i'm sorry if it's sleepy <laughs> okay <laughs> okay you can connect with any systems or data i mean you have different connectors which are available and suppose if there is something you don't want to build from scratch we have accelerators available too so accelerators for salesforce we'll just see while we're going through the demo of any point platform so yeah there are several assets available so you don't have to build everything from scratch and suppose if your team is working on something and if they have built an asset the other team they can still utilize that asset you can get it published and you can still use existing components so that you are not doing everything from scratch and this is how we are actually reducing the time to market and we are able to deliver faster so with that uh, yeah this will be like more connecting with you or like there are different services and it has so many capabilities to offer like suppose if you are into sales or services you can connect with sap netsuite oracle service now and like different platform different analytics tool you can connect with einstein analytics so here you might be getting a question that i already have this capabilities in salesforce right i can directly connect with any end system whichever i want like uh, there are some you have to, i mean i worked with einstein one and i remember that i could connect to netsuite easily from sales uh, from salesforce platform as well so why do i actually need an integration tool what is the purpose here so i would say just look at the bigger picture you're trying to compose i mean you're trying to build an uh, entire composable architecture an enterprise architecture i would say wherein there are different systems you could be having some apis which are like decade oh, i mean not apis but some legacy systems as well which are not supported by salesforce or if you have to perform some complex transformations like batch processing or you are having some a uh, large amount of data which has to be processed or the files which has to be migrated in that in that case you definitely need an integration system integration tool to make your work easier and yeah it has it definitely has like lot to offer with all the prominent like and also, and also if i mean if you have a legacy system which is not in this picture you can still connect to it using your web services rest api soap api components and different capabilities you can also build i mean if you can also build your own connector as well you i mean if you have a strong background in java or not even a strong background you just need some some technology analytics to know and yeah we'll just see more features like what all things it has so moving to the first one any point platform yeah wolf number one integration and api platform tool definitely and for sure so as i said before it has so much things to offer like for the entire api management life cycle you can design i mean that's a unified place a one shop one place stop i would say for designing your api publishing your api running managing security monitoring debugging everything at one place 
so we'll just head over to any point platform and we'll see like what all things we can do so um yeah here we are so you can actually create a free trial account on any point platform the url is like anypoint.mulesoft.com it's very simple so let me just open it yeah so this is going to be the front page and you get a 30 days free trial account in which you can like explore all the services you want so the first will go to design center this is where we are actually going to design an api uh, design an api from scratch okay and i'll just uh, we're going to design a rest api sorry yeah yeah code builder okay no it's it's not ga yet it's in beta but i think by dreamforce it will be available like uh, ga yeah. but you can still try it out like we'll just see i mean if time permits definitely we'll go there so uh we'll create an api a rest api specification even if you have not created an api but if you know some basics of api like what are the methods what are the data types you can learn about api on raml uh, i mean there are so many sites which teach us like, how to build an api but if you are someone who's completely new to API, uh, you have this option, guide me through it. If you are someone who's comfortable designing an API, you can just have, uh, I'm comfortable designing my own API, I don't need your help. So, okay, we'll just take help for today. Uh, Salesforce, contact, sync. And here you can see the options. We have different options, RAML, OS. So there are different types of API languages, open API specification or RESTful API modeling language. So we'll go to the guided option, which helps you to create, like you don't even have to type an API or type the entire code. It's going to create it for you. Uh, for you. So um, yeah, while it loads. So this is how it is. I can just give it a name like, any, sorry. Salesforce contact sync. Okay, I can select my protocols, whichever I want, HTTP, HTTPS, media type. Um, secured but i don't want i mean if you see in the right hand side it is it's actually creating an api it's writing the api for you this this portion uh the raml part okay so you can you can download the api or if you have any pre-existing api which you already have you can also import it directly in the design center and get started on it you can have your resources defined post api or anything you can something like contact okay and then secured okay uh, you can have some response for your api what is the response that you want you can add some like statuses response 200 300 bar, like whatever you want so i'm going to have like the, as this is a post method so yeah you just need to know some fundamentals of api http uh, uh, what is an http https then uh, what is request response what are the different methods i think this is the basics which we have learned in like college so we should be good with it uh, even if you're not we can anytime learn that things successfully updated yeah and while you're designing your api if you see over here there is an option like the arrow thing try it you can actually go cl click here and you can try your api while you're building it so yeah this is going to give me just 200 okay and i have added my message in the wrong place okay i'll just add it in the body okay uh, application D, uh, json which is by default and then i'll have the description i'll add the property example okay so while i'm creating my api i'm also testing it side by side so this is called as api first approach so we are actually designing an api api and testing it side by side so it gives us like understanding like how our api is going to look i mean a foresight basically you can say how is it going to look when we are when we have our api published or when we have our apis exposed to the public so yeah once i mean this is a very basic example but once you're done pub creating your api so you can download your api if you want or you can sh publish your api to exchange so once you're done designing your api you're sharing your api with your team members your peers your collaborators your project managers or the external entity entities whom who you're working with uh, yeah sorry um you can say you Standards that you yeah yes we can download it as raml or as an os okay, okay. so those so are the two options which are available right. so um yeah and then once we publish it to a exchange exchange is more like a repository where i have different assets so i can after publishing it to exchange i can share with my team members so that they can have a review of my api if they find that my api is not following some standards or procedures then i can just go back 
again to design center i can make those changes after getting the comments from them and then they can publish it again to exchange so uh, that's how it's like you even before developing the application or integration you're still working on your apis and you're getting sure that you're making sure that it's clear in the initial stage so that you don't have to do changes repetition going further like when you're building an application so you see that it has been published to exchange you can directly go to exchange and see like uh, yeah this is how it looks like i should have added more documentation so that when i'm sharing with the third party uh, people like whoever is like non technical if i'm sharing with them suppose if there is a web team who wants to see like if this api is good if this is like the response structure the resp request structure if it's fine if it's like looking good then they'll approve it out and i can just give them some documentation about the api like how anything like just it's a one place thing like we're maintaining my documentation so i don't have to like have different confluence folders web word document to maintain for different api and just having it over here like this api will sync contact between salesforce and mulesoft or something like that and i can share i can maintain their versions as well and i can make this pretty by adding some images graph and everything so it's like creating a salesforce uh, documentation for my api and when we go back to exchange okay so you can see there are several assets which are already published by mulesoft they have already given different assets like provided by mulesoft you can see there are like connectors there are any type sorry when you're going to any there are custom connectors data wave libraries examples so if you are someone who's like the very beginning like first time and you want to know like what are the code standards how should i be designing an api just go to any one of them and you can download like you can just see like salesforce let me type because that will be more relevant for you okay added examples let me go to the api so there are accelerators for salesforce customer system api you can just go into it you can download the code or view code you, you get a proper summary you get proper information for endpoint you can just try out this endpoint if this thing works and you can actually use it as a template to get started on your project so you don't have to build everything from scratch you can use it as a code uh, standard format as well so you can download this thing as yeah your your question right you can download it as an example and os you can just view the code everything so that's on exchange uh sorry was there any question yeah no no no, no, no. okay cool so uh once we have like we have designed our api first thing we have published it to exchange which is our repository once we are done with this we will start developing our api so when it comes to development i'll be going to my studio okay and that's where i come to the slide again so any point studio is like mulesoft's native studio and now we are having the code builder which he asked about so that's I mean, currently the any point studio which we have uh, it has like all the capabilities it's based on it's built on eclipse and it has connectors it has everything you don't have to write the code from scratch it is just like drag and drop components you have several connectors almost for every system whichever you want to connect with if you don't have the connect present you can directly connect using the web component as well uh, you have you can perform complex logical transformation and do all sorts of operation using anypoint studio it, it's it's fast it's good currently we have like there's a new version as well coming in i think they'll be announcing during tdx or doing i'm not sure but yeah you can connect with your ci cd you can build your test cases or you can do testing deployment debugging directly deploying your applications from studio to cloud or anywhere and the next thing that they're coming is like the uh, anypoint code builder which is like you must have heard of our socials and everywhere that there is a quite hype about it and it's it, it should be because it's built on vs studio code so there's going to be a plugin available in the vs studio code as well as it's going to be on it's going to be there on the anypoint platform as well so currently if you have seen they have a beta version and you can definitely try that out because yeah it's good and you can provide your feedback as well based on that so that they can make more changes so this is how it is um, yeah this is how it looks so if you can see there's an anypoint code builder was uh, the logo over here and yeah so this is how it's but they are, they are, they're still they're still working on it there's going to be graphical component coming in yeah sorry question no it won't be replacing i mean not not this soon i don't have any project plans as such but i don't think they would be replacing it this soon but this is like this is they're making it like more salesforce community friendly i would say because salesforce guys they are i guess well guys are used to vs studio core or working uh, uh, i mean, I mean we, we had to get ticket out a while back now, that's yeah. a joke. so that's, 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 that's 
going to joke and ask if there's a yeah, go, go yeah the there is there is uh, it's coming it's on the way <laughs> i would say <laughs> okay yeah so it's it's the same thing but yeah it's still coming i think they're going to do first demo in tds on the yeah, but, yeah. So you realize then people like demand getting it on the uh, cloud version of the ssh right so we are having a cloud <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Requests will never stop. We have a cloud version of VS Code as well. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, so this is the cloud version. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let me trick you tonight. No, you? I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> sure, that's on the way as well. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> So we have it on cloud currently, and the one I'm saying is it's coming in. Uh, it's going to come for VS Code. It's not on VS Code yet, but I think they're going to do it for on TDX or something. They're going to launch it. Um, yeah, so it's in progress. So let's move towards AnyPoint Studio, the one which we have now, because yeah, that's the one serving purpose as of now. Uh, so yeah, you can create a new Mule project, and uh, yeah, you can once you have created a project. Let me give it some name: Salesforce. Contacts, system API. Okay, I can I can import uh, I, if I have the API which I have published in Exchange. I have first created my API in Design Center, then I have published in Exchange. So I can get that API which is already in Exchange, or I can build a complete new project from scratch. But why would I do that? I, I mean, I have an API which I have published in Exchange just now. I'll just import that API from Exchange, or you can have from Maven. So this is typically what we do. So um, yeah, I'll just select Salesforce and. It should give me Salesforce contact. Yeah, this is my AnyPoint platform uh, thing as well connected over your account. Yep. Let me search. Okay, wrong name. What's wrong with me? Okay. So uh, while it's like loading, so I can just add my API. Okay, yeah, this is the one. And then I'm actually importing, and then it's finished. That's it. It will it will create a new project for you. It will import your API, and then it will give you this entire structure. So this process we are calling it as scaffolding. So we are like, yeah, it's scaffolded for you, and you have all these things defined. You don't have to like write the code, but behind the scenes, the code has actually been written for you. And that's what they say. I mean, typically a Java developer or any developer to write this code or build this integration, it would have taken definitely few days or week. But yeah, this is already made tailored for you. So once this is there, what you'll do is like, so this is my post uh, method which we had created previously in the first step, the design center thing. So this is the same method. Now I have like defined what is the request, what is the response, everything. Now I want to implement it, implement in the sense what this method is going to do, what is like from it is, it, is it going to interact with some different end system? Is it going to get some data from different end system or what? So I'll just remove this thing, uh, like the transform message. I can add my own connectors, whichever I want to. Suppose if I want to have a query on Salesforce, so here it should be, yeah. So this is the Salesforce connector basically. Uh, yeah, I just have to drag and drop it over here. And then all I need to do is configure this connector. So connector configuration, I'll give the username, password, all the authentication stuff I need to do. And that's all, that's, uh, that's it. I mean, the code will be written for you in the background. So you can just go towards, um, go to XML and you can see the code has been like typed for you. If I'm go going further in depth, it will be like doing everything for me. So does it have to, to connect to a Ethernet password? Yeah. Or are there other so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, we have this. Token, right? Yeah, we have this username, password, and token. Okay. No, not, not security token, but the okay. Flow without, without the password at all. Okay, I think so. So in that case, we need to select the. We can select the authentication method. We can have basic OAuth username, OAuth username, password, or SAML. So these are the four uh, different options which we have, and they differ from connector to connector. So if I different, like suppose if I'm connecting with a Workday connector, it will be having a different credentials or different authentication methods. So this is what we have for Salesforce, and they keep on changing it constantly. There are new updates which keep on coming for the connectors as well. So um, yeah, so this is and. You just name the connector you want and we'll be getting it. So it's like Slack as well. You can you get different operations over here. 
and the one which you are saying that data weave so this is the data weave it's, it's called as transform message so these are the core components and when you're doing the any point fundamental training you'll be definitely like you'll be building everything from scratch step by step so it will be like there will be so many hands-on practices that you will be actually ready for your first exam as well like the first test let's not get there so soon <laughs> okay so you can actually write your data weave uh, like whatever transformation you want whatever uh, logical transformation or whatever complex query you want you can have it over here so uh, with all this been said like i already have created a i mean i have a project which i have created just to save time so and also i was hoping that my demo will like run <laughs> so this is the uh, this is the one so i have actually created i'll just zoom this thing okay so i'm like i'm having a transform message i'm querying for salesforce if the contact exists or not then I'll accordingly do, and this is a transformation query. So all this is like, maybe this might be a bit difficult or a bit um, overwhelming for you. But yeah, because this is the first time you guys are actually seeing it. But when you're doing the um, hands-on on the training, you'll be doing like, you'll be building actually a bit more like complex applications and that will be like so easy for you. Because everything, you don't, you're not actually writing the code or anything, you're just dragging and dropping the, components and you're just filling in details like fill in the blanks kind of thing once you're done building your application all you'll do is you'll deploy the application so you, there are several deployment options as well available it's not important like you don't have to be relying on the mule at any point i mean the cloud hub you can deploy it on your own servers it could be on premise on any of the cloud bare metal wherever you want to deploy so and there are different deployment options like rtf and different strategies available as well so that it's, it's too flexible with deployment um, and before going to deployment if you want to create your m unit test suites so they are like the unit testing so it will be creating you autom uh, it will be helping you to create automatic test suites so you don't have to write the test suites from like from the scratch it will be just recording there will be a recorder which will be like recording uh, where is my input what are the requests coming in how is it happening so yeah now let's deploy it to cloud up so this is like i can run my application i can debug and then I'm going to deploy it to cloud up. I can publish this thing to exchange as well. If I want to uh, save this entire application and share with someone else so that they can reuse it in further. So I'll deploy in cloud up. So cloud up actually means that I'm going to be deploying, hosting it on my runtime manager. So let's go to any, like, yeah, this is how it is. I can choose my versions, B core, worker size. So they are like behind this in the, I mean, under the hood, I can say that there is an AWS EC2 instance is working. So that's under the hood and we have covered it with cloud up and all this workers, workers, everything. So let's go to runtime manager where I have already deployed an application for you guys in the time. Yeah. So we can deploy an application. We have flex gateway. We have different like VPC, VPN capabilities as well. Load balancers, everything. So that's what I'm saying. Like it has everything under one place. So this is the contact sync API demo, which is already there. It's running. I can see the log statistics, settings, and everything. And uh, once my API, this is like the entire application which is running. So this is like one mule application, a system API. I could be having so many of them, and they are like handling like go back to the previous thing. Like we had the mesh kind of thing. So this is just one mule application. So we could be having several of them. Uh, if there are 100 APIs, 50 APIs, there are actually instances where they're having like more than 100 APIs as well. So it's that complex. It, if it gets complex, how do you manage it? For that, we have another thing. So uh, yeah, so I'm just going to run this API. This What it does is it's going to get data from Salesforce. And yeah, this is the thing. If it, if it doesn't find, yeah, the phone, num phone number was already up to date. If I want to change some different number, so this my API is actually like, this is how the API request response would look like. The one which we had created initially, like which is having a request response. You can add some security, um, different kind of security policy. You can achieve zero trust security as well with it and so much more. Again, don't get overwhelmed because there are so many features. They're all simple and easy when you actually learn and use them. There are just so many things available um yeah i would like to show you guys an api manager as well because that is where you can apply some some security policies and you might be thinking as a security policy it's someone i think we can have the proper session on this thing because that's that's how much i love it <laughs> okay so uh, yeah so you can add an api which we already have 
the one which we have deployed and everything and you can apply some basic authentication OAuth, Okta, JWT policy at an ease. You don't have to be some expert or security expose, expert to apply policy. You can just go into the policy section, add a new policy. And there are different categories as well, security. Uh, so if you can see, there are different XML threat protection, basic authentication, LDAP, IP allow list, block list, and so many more. You just need to go into any one of the policy like the base JWT validation, next. Just fill in all the details, what all RSA configuration to the need and apply and the policy will be applied to your application, which is deployed and cloud up. So it's that easy. And there is documentation and everything available for you all. So the first time I did this policy, it was like completely by myself and it was, it was pretty easy. It definitely took some days to like learn all the components and everything, but yeah, you can do it. Okay. Uh, seeing the time and consideration. The next thing we have is yeah, we have seen AnyPoint platform, the studio. The next thing is Mules of Composer. So why I'm saying Mules of Composer is more relevant or more suitable to you because it's available in the Salesforce developer org. But definitely it's, it won't be there in the trial version. I guess you need some access for it. Uh, Isabella Navarro is one who's running the Mules of Composer thing. You can just reach out to her if you have any queries or if your organization is already having Composer access, you can just try it out. So this is like a simplified version of integration tool, which you have in your like Salesforce developer account. So you can create an integration, uh, you can create to different, you can connect to different apps and everything. You can do all the capabilities, but you won't be having like APIs. It's an easy version. I mean, we'll just see how we can do because I'm just trying to get some, I did get access uh, and do have access, but yeah. So this is how it will look like. You need to go into your account. Okay, it's, it's a refreshing. So just search in Composer, Mules of Composer. So if you have relevant permissions and everything, only then you're going to see Mules of Composer. And I haven't explored it much, but I've just tried a few times. So you can create a new floor from it. So this is this is having all the integration capabilities. You can learn about it on Trailhead as well. There's a proper community and everything going on around uh, Mules of Composer. So yeah, just get, because this will be like a more easy version if you are someone who is like, planning to learn something about, if you are like Salesforce developer who's planning to learn something about music, this will be like the easiest and the first go-to option I would say available. Rather than, of course, the training and everything, proper mules are training any point platform is, is easy as well. But this is something like a quick start, like you can get it easily. So you can click on create flow, the one option we had over there. It's going to open a proper canvas and yeah, you can choose like if you want to have a scheduler or if you want to choose any system event. So there are different options available and they keep on updating. The first time I saw there were like five or six and now they have so many. So I think they, they, they release different uh, system events as well. So suppose if I want to connect with Salesforce, I already, I mean, you can have a new connection as well. You can display some things, Salesforce contact demo. Okay, connect. This is connecting with your organization. You can select which organization you want to connect with, allow access. And yeah, so then you can you can you can select like what what should be triggering your flow. So this is like how you want your flow to get started. Uh, will there be a new record added and that's how I want my flow to be triggered or if, if your record is deleted, I want my flow to be triggered. If you don't want such trigger options, you can just go for a scheduler as well, the one which we had in the previous step. Like, let me delete this. You can go with scheduler option. You can select if it should be running every 15 minutes, one hour, 45 minutes, five hour, something like that. Okay. So let me go with the Salesforce option. I can select the connection. If there is a new record which has been added, I want this flow to be triggered. Okay. And then I can select the object. So there are different objects. Uh, you guys are more familiar with this than I am. Okay. So what are the trigger condition? All condition must be met, any condition or get all the records. So I just want all the records from the uh, object to be like fetched. I can uh, select my fields as well, which field do I want? So I'm selecting like account ID, first name, if they have, yeah. And then I can select, yeah, there are two fields selected. You can have more fields as well. In the next step, you can have like system action if you want a if else block, a for loop. So just, you're not writing any code for this. This is someone like, if someone is from a, 
uh, non technical background but he has like at least some basics covered they can definitely get started with neo this is for something like someone for them like who are like reluctant towards coding and everything but they still want to be in tech this is this is definitely a good option so you can have your own if else block for loop system actions what systems am i going to have what are the different end systems i'm going to have you can use a http connector as well so suppose i'm fetching all the records like my triggering point is salesforce and i want the data to be pushed into google uh, google i'm sorry so yeah so if uh, yeah, my trigger option is like on a new record. So if there is a new record which has been added, after I add a new record, I want my data to be like added in Google Sheet. So I'm maintaining a sheet, a record kind of thing. I I I'm guess I'm sure I'm sure you can think of some better record. I mean better use case as well. But this is what it is. So uh, yeah, you can select what act actions do you want on the Google Sheet. If you want to create a new row or update some spread spreadsheets, I'm selecting a spreadsheet contact and then select some columns which column do you want to be added to spreadsheet so for each and every connector the capability is different i mean it's different but it's quite easy that someone who's like even who has never worked before on this uh, composer can definitely get started with it so once you're done with it you can test it you can save it you can activate the flow okay and that's it whenever you have a new record which has been inserted or created in your salesforce contact object this flow will be triggered and you can you can get things time so this is like very simple you can still add more step if you want still if else something you can just go on and on until your use case is not completed or your task is not achieved so this is all about composer there are so many trailhead series and all present over the trail mixes as well so i think that should be quite helpful because they will be providing a demo account a demo or something to play around with it so any questions <laughs> Bring it down. Yeah. Sorry? How much is the charge? Okay, charge. I sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, I know I have no idea about the charging fees. Do we have anybody from sales? Mm, no. Sorry. No information on charging, but yeah. So is that when you're running these composer flows, are they under the same constraints as the core platform in terms of multi tenancy and governor limits? And what what are the constraints? Or like how many you can have, how many you can execute, you know, twenty four hour period, all that type of stuff. Can be typically see on the platform. Uh, no idea, but I think um, they should be similar. Yeah. You do you have any idea? Uh, probably yeah. So the governor limit remains same as uh, did you have in Salesforce. Okay. Like for twenty four say hours, it has its one lakh API limits and all those totally based on your uh, licensing model. Okay. Yeah. It just uh, Salesforce events behind the wood, which you know, present it. Or yeah, like when, when, whenever there's a new record create, gets created, it should uh, execute and uh, insert it in that suite and in the system. So it just, one of the UKIs is triggered and the govern, governor limit uh, is exactly the same what it has it in the source um, licensing yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it can be used for inbound as well. No, I think it's only for outbound, like, yeah, integrating. It's not having any data. No, we cannot send any data request or anything like that. Like, how is it different from the Salesforce outbound flows? I have never used outbound flows, but if anyone has, then can give me a comparison. I feel we use the same way. I'm not sure about uh, if I can answer, but <coughs> since you know it has uh, multiple connectors, so I'm not sure if uh, Salesforce, you know, outbound flows, yeah. connect to each and every system. But it does. Like currently, it has it is supporting 20 of the uh, connect system, system connectors, connectors. Right? and Salesforce is adding more and more top of it. Hmm. So I think that is. And we have HTTP request as well. If yes. there's anything like yes. anything out of the box coming yes. in, you can connect them as well. So moving ahead with the last component, uh, this is like quite new, I would say, the uh, MuleSoft RPA, Robotic Process Automation. So if there are some manual tasks, if you have been doing something like repetitive tasks, uh, so you can actually get them automated. For an example, the, the most famous use, use case which has been like running around is like 
suppose if you have pub if you're publishing a meetup and we're doing it like ma quarterly or monthly basis so we can just automate the process of creating the entire publishing the meetup as well something like that or suppose if uh, if there is a task of collecting a particular set of email and then sending out like making a data thing like a document or something like that like if there is something like which you have been doing repetitively uh, the same thing every day so you can actually make it as a process and it can be automated so that you can do using rpa so you can automate any process and task for any team it could be an image ui document and i haven't explored it much but yeah this is something like new and you should definitely explore if you're someone who's looking into rpa okay it provides you end to end automation you can reuse uh, your ap or you can reuse the automations as well and it's quite flexible with any point platform composer and different systems yeah so this that's all about mules of rpa with that i think uh, we have covered almost all the components and then moving ahead to the next i mean yeah about mules of we have covered any point platform studio uh, composer rpa yeah. so there would be some common questions if you are actually planning to learn mules of get started with it so who can learn mules of what are the career opportunities what skills do i need to learn if i want to learn mules of or if there is some friend of yours who's like who's planning to switch from different integration tool to mules of so it's basically like anyone can learn mules of there are free trainings available there are a lot of resources available community support mules of forums which is more like a question answer thing like if you have if you're stuck anywhere you can just find the question the answer there um so definitely anyone can learn mules of there are several career opportunities available because there are so many job postings openings so there's a lot of demand for mules of developers what skills do i need all you need to know is just the basic stuff like what is https soap api the rest api the basics of integration what is an esb enterprise service bus what is an integration what is the need for integration i think once you have this basics and some knowledge about json xml all this language i mean just the basic because other things will be covered in the training as well so it's quite easy for you to learn and get started there is a 7 days uh, training course which is available like the self paced one so once you done once you do that training you will be available for you can get a free certification attempt for mcd level 1 which is the first level the next ones are definitely like they have price but the first one is easy and you can actually add that to your resume it will be like super helpful so how do we get started with mules so these are the resources present so there are training uh, mules of trainings on training.mulesup.com and now currently they have moved some part to trailhead as well okay there is mules of documentation which is really helpful it has like all the details there are tutorials which we have been creating then there are stuff on like there's a uh, trailhead sorry that was mix of both <laughs> there's a trailhead and there are, then there are mules of meetups which are just like the salesforce development meetups you can learn from them as well there are there's so much pre existing content available and then there are mules of forums so yeah i just got some links today from the training team because there are there are a lot of changes and i was like give me something which i can yeah oh, she does that. i just point out the mules of meetups are the same Oh, oh! You can't say that. You should attend one first before you say that. I would say <laughs> definitely you can't say that. Don't talk short people. I will. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Not just kidding. So um, yeah, getting started with me also. So two days free sell. I mean, there, it was all year seven days. I don't think that will be different. So it's free, free, free. And there are some training courses. <laughs> okay. And that's what attracts us like yeah so the it says for mule 3 version but go ahead with mule 4 only i would say uh i mean there are few but i'm not sure i mean i used mule 3 like long back i don't i don't even remember <laughs> so yeah just go ahead with mule 4 i would say that's something you need and then there are some different yeah certifications data sheet and everything what i what so you can just download all the material from here it's like training.mulesup.com download you'll get all the information over here and yeah that's all you need to get started apart from this just 5 minutes yeah this is the book uh, i recently co-authored it's called as mules of for salesforce developers Ooh. and yeah <laughs> it's available on amazon and pack publication i was actually about to get one but the publishers didn't ship it on time i promise i'll get it next time promise <laughs> as a giveaway here yeah. so yeah you can check it out on amazon and let me know 
with you guys. Let me help with that. Okay. The next one is the next steps. You can join a community. I'm poaching you. And you can. <laughs> yeah, I'll be coming for sure. <laughs> you can watch us live on Twitch. We are like doing Twitch streams on like LinkedIn and Twitch, of course. It's a gaming platform, but we do some live random coding. If you want to get some Salesforce stuff, you will come here. You can come on. <laughs> you can try any point platform for free, the 30 days free trial account. So, yeah, everything is free, right? I mean, just try it out. <laughs> So yeah, if you have any Q&A, you can just reach out to me or yeah, I don't think the QR, I'm not sure, it's quite long. Uh, after the event too fast, some people are taking attendance. Okay, I'll just, I'll go slow, I can. So how to get started with MuleSoft? Not that one. Yeah. <laughs> Your code, everything. Okay. <laughs> the um, MuleSoft for Salesforce developers? Um, yeah. These things. These will be shared in the next maybe like seven or so. So run the steps, YouTube your thing, <laughs> and our YouTube channel. Oh. Okay. Uh, we do have. We, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we do have YouTube channel and everything, but now it's one Salesforce. You see. Mm. <laughs> it will be. Thank you. <laughs>